Okay, uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, let's go into, uh, and we'll just go down. We'll go to uh, chapter 28, the Lord's Table. And let's study from there. Uh, now we've established a couple of facts on what the cross is and uh, what the blood of Jesus does. Um, now, I'm sure all of us uh, partake in the Lord's table, and uh, we do know what the Lord's table is. The Lord Jesus himself said, uh, you know, uh, do it in remembrance of me. He gave us the instructions on how to do it. And again, great apostle Paul writes about it. Uh, he exhorts the church uh, in Corinth on how we must, you know, uh, very respectfully and honor in an honorable way partake in the Lord's table. But let's look at what it what happens when we partake in the lord's table right uh, he announced the lord jesus announced a new covenant right i'm sure the uh, disciples would have thought you know uh, what is this new thing you know, we know about uh, the covenant god made with abraham and moses and uh, what is this new covenant uh, uh, but he said he's going to establish this new covenant with his blood the lord's table is the proclamation of the power of Christ's death and resurrection, right? Christ's death and resurrection is true. It is real. And when we, you and I, partake in the Lord's table, we are pro proclaiming that. Right? We're proclaiming that hey, I believe in Jesus' death. I believe that he died. He took my sins. And I believe that he shed his blood on the cross. And he died for my sins. And I also believe that he resurrected from the dead. This is a token or a sign of the blood covenant God established with us. Now let's read this entire passage uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 17 to 34. It's a, quite a long passage, but it's very important to read this so that uh, we understand uh, you know, the gravity of the situation, understand the importance and the reverence that we need to give. While we celebrate the Lord's table, let's one of us please go ahead and read First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse seventeen to thirty-four. Yes, any one of us. First Corinthians eleven, seventeen to thirty-four. First Corinthians chapter 11 verses 17 to 34. In the following directives, I have no price for you. For your meeting, you do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not Lord's supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to drink and to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and think, and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on them. So that is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my dear brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jafina. Now, 
the church in Corinth is a church where they're already uh, you know, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. They're wonderful believers. But here's the problem. Their moral standards are very low. Now, we must understand that uh, a place like Corinth, with, uh, there was a goddess named Aphrodite, which had thousands of prostitutes. It was a Gentile nation in the uh, Asia Minor, a Gentile place. And we, we also look briefly at Corinth and how Paul was able to minister in Greece. Uh, but here Paul is writing something very important. He's telling them, now, one problem is there's division among you. One is saying, I follow Paul. One is saying, Apollos. One is saying, Peter, and all of these things. So there's division. There are different groups of people in the same church. Two, when you come together to partake in the Lord's table, what we notice is that there are some people who are going ahead with the Lord's Supper immediately. Some of them are sitting around drinking the wine and eating the bread. Uh, so it's turned into a feast. Right? It's turned into a party. Uh, instead of doing this whole, the Lord's partying in the Lord's table in reverence and honorable and holy manner, recognizing the death of Christ and what he achieved for us, it's the spiritual meaning is lost and it's become a time of you know, fellowship and gatherings. You know, something like what we have after church, we have a cup of tea and maybe some biscuits or snacks. And then, uh, you know, they're outside the church, they're all talking and discussing. It's become something like that during the church service. Now, Paul is saying, I cannot, uh, you know, accept this. Don't you have houses where you can eat and drink and have fellowship and all those kind of things? So Paul is, he, he's getting very upset here. He, firstly, he's saying, there is division among you which should not be there. And above that, with all this, you know, you'll have all the gifts of the Spirit, all of that is wonderful. There's division, and now you're partaking in the Lord's table in a dishonorable manner. And because you're doing that, he goes on to say that instead of enjoying the benefits or the blessings of the cross and what Jesus did uh, uh, and through the Lord's table, instead of enjoying the blessings, what is happening Many of you are falling sick. Many of you are going through, uh, uh, you know, diseases and becoming weak in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. Uh, it's not in favor of you. Why? Because you're partaking in the Lord's table in a dishonorable manner. So Paul was very strict. He is exhorting, correcting, he's rebuking them and he's saying, listen, you all as believers, it's wonderful you are flowing the gifts of the spirit. Right? You know the gifts of the Spirit, you're prophesying, you have word of knowledge, all of that. It's good. But when it comes to this matter, you know, you have failed. One, division among you. Two, you're partaking in the Lord's table in a dishonorable manner. It's become more like a, you know, a feast or a celebration of, uh, you know, just enjoying together rather than doing it in reverence. And because as a result of that, you're falling sick, you're... Uh, going through difficulties and challenges. So, what do, what do we uh, learn from this? First thing we learn is that God has called us to do this in an honorable manner. The Lord's table is not a place of, you know, it's not it's not like we're feasting and enjoying. It's a reverent thing. Yes, there are times of enjoyment. Yeah, you know, as a church, as ministries. Yes, you now if you have youth meetings. Uh, you know, you have, you know, youth camps, you enjoy, right? You, you, you have times of games and fellowship. Uh, it's, it's a different time. Uh, then you have even church, me church camps. It's, it's a good time. But every time we partake in the Lord's table, we must not forget its reverence. Especially in time and age that we are coming to, we must be very certain and we must Make sure that when we are partaking in the Lord's table, that we are not doing it out of, you know, just pride or we are not, you know, uh, doing it in a, uh, in a dishonorable way. Because if we do so, it's going to affect our lives. So Paul is telling the church, don't do it 
if there will be a time you can go home and do your parties and your enjoyments right but when you're partying partaking in the lord's table do it in reverence right what is the purpose and the power of the lord's table the purpose with which the lord's table was given for is for us to proclaim the lord's death and this sacred celebration and experience the full blessings of the cross of jesus christ imagine when we are holding that bread we're holding that grape juice or the wine that we have we're saying god this is your body and this is your blood it's as if you know the lord jesus is present there and we are among the 12 there sitting on the on the lord's table it's as if so and all the blessings of the cross everything that we've studied we are forgiven we are healed we are saved we are delivered redeemed righteous justified holy sanctified all of these things are bestowed upon us right and that is why that's what the purpose of the lord's table is the full blessings of the cross of jesus christ will be will be bestowed upon us this is god's plan this is god's desire right this is god's will and it, and it, and we know that it's not god's intent or desire for us to be become sick and so we must very honorably partake in the lord's table each time we partake in the lord's table we are making a proclamation whether it's two or three of you in your small group or even in your family or whether there are thousands of people our attitude towards the lord's table should not change you know many a times we visit uh, families elderly families who are uh, you know who unable to come to church what we do is we take the lord's table there and it just be about three of us three or four of us uh but we take it uh, with so much of reverence because we know that we are proclaiming the death the burial the resurrection of our lord jesus christ and we know that the power of christ the blessings of christ will fall upon us what does paul write there and he says as often as you do it do it in remembrance of me and the lord jesus himself also says that as often as you do it do it in remembrance of me don't partake in the lord's table you know thinking of uh things that happened two years back thinking of your friend thinking of what will i have for lunch or who will i meet uh two days later what about my exams all these thoughts right if we partake of it and our mind is not in line with god the power or the effect of that is going to be is is not going to be there right now picture this as a believer i'm in church i have the lord's table right i have the elements in my hand the pastor the leader is praying and i'm thinking oh man after church i wish i can uh, you know meet this person or i wish i could uh, after church where can i go and have lunch um uh, you know i got to service my car i got to make sure that i you know tomorrow's monday uh, there are some projects that i have to do so what if i'm thinking of all of that and then the pastor is saying uh let's partake in the elements and we partake of it is it going to have any effect on us not really because we are not doing it in remembrance of him we are doing it in remembrance of all the other things right now the reason i'm saying this is because it has happened to me when i was a young boy uh you know just became a believer i didn't understand you know the whole thing of the lord supper it took time i used to you know hold that i used to be okay uh, and i sometimes you know the mind goes everywhere and uh, and you won't even realize oh i've already finished the partaking and i realized that i'm not experiencing any of the blessings i'm not experiencing the the fullness of god the power of god in my life the work of the holy spirit even after taking the lord's table and i thought to myself am i taking it the wrong way and i realized yes because the bible teaches us paul is saying as often as you do it 
do it in remembrance of me. So when we partake, we as leaders, we say, okay, this is the body. The first thing should be is, Lord, you bruised your body for me. You took the scourges, you took the lashes on your body because of me. The body that was, the nails that were pierced in your hands, the crown of thorns, the, the side that was pierced, your body which was just so weak and battered, all of that was done for me. The body that died, the body that resurrected back to life is for me. Then, when we partake, the power of the cross will pour out upon our lives. When we think of the grape juice or the wine, whatever we are, you are partaking in, we think about it and we say, Lord, this is your blood. And without the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And every drop of blood from your body was gone, where the soldier pierced the side and water came out, blood and water. And this blood, and through this blood, I have forgiveness of sins. And when we partake of it, it becomes powerful. The devil has no access because we are proclaiming the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We are proclaiming that on the cross, all our sins are paid for. We, so we have a right standing with God. Imagine the devil saying, you know what? You, you, you watched this or you said this last week and now you're standing here ready to take the Lord's day, ready to partake in this communion. Uh, how many of us have felt that? I've got that so many times. You know, the, he accuses us. Are you sure you want to take this? Because you remember what you did last week? But you and I can say, all our sins are paid for and we partake of it. His forgiveness of sins flows through us. So we have a right standing between God. What you can do is you tell the enemy, this has nothing to do with you. Yes, I may have sinned, but right now I'm making it right before God. Now I will have a right standing before God. Right? The power of sin is broken, so we are free from the dominion of sin. Now, just because I partake in the Lord's table, it's not like a medicine. I get fever, I take 5 ml and I'm better. No, it's not a medicine. Right? Uh, the Lord's table on Sunday is not medicine. Right? It's not like, okay, I'll sin uh, through the week. And then anyway, this coming Sunday is the first Sunday. So it's the Lord, we are celebrating the Lord's table. I'll take it and my sins are forgiven. And then I have the entire month again. I can just go back to what I was doing. Then the next Sunday, first Sunday, I'll just take the Lord's table. And no, no, it's not a medicine. It's not a dosage that, you know, the doctors prescribe. The power of sin is broken. So the power of the enemy, the sin that the enemy has, uh, you know, made us fall into, that power is broken. After we partake, we say, God, this area of my life, whether it is, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever sinful nature that we will be struggling with, we can say, God, that power is broken because of partaking in what the blessings of the cross. Jesus removed our sickness. The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. He paid the punishment. Now we have shalom. We have restoration. Jesus removed the curse of the law so that the blessings of Abraham are made open to us. He removed the curse of the law. What was the curse of the law? The law, none of us could keep the law. Now, because of that, death and sin was still there. And sin is a curse. Death is a curse. But Jesus removed that on the cross. He made the blessings of Abraham come upon us. The power of Satan was destroyed. Very important. 
when we are partaking in the Lord's table, remember the power of Satan is destroyed. Right? So we have complete mastery or complete authority over Satan and his demons. So we partake in the Lord's table and the enemy comes maybe on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, he begins to come and bring temptations into our hearts, into our minds. What must we do? First thing we must say is, Satan, your power over me is destroyed because I am a partaker of what God has done for me on the cross. So the power of sin is destroyed. Your, your power is over. If we don't say that, we will fall into temptation and eventually fall into sin. So we, that is our battle. God has made a way, but God is also asking us to fight the battle. We must fight it on our own. Paul writes it wonderfully to Timothy and he says, Timothy, Timothy, you've got a church in Ephesus now. You've got ready. I've stayed there for three years. I've seen the leaders. I've seen it's a, it's a very difficult place. But here's what I'm going to tell you, Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight it. Everywhere Paul uses this imagery of fighting. To the Corinthians, he says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. Then to the Ephesians again, in the last chapter, he ends it by saying, put on the armor of God. Right? So it's a fight. Yes, the enemy is defeated, but he's still, you know, around. He's still lingering. He's trying to see who he can devour. Peter writes and he says, the enemy is like a roaring lion trying to see who he can devour. But he's defeated. Right? He looks like a roaring lion, but he's not a roaring lion. Right? The Bible says the enemy is like a roaring lion. He can show himself as something. It is not really that. The, the, uh, in another verse, it says that, I forget the chapter and verse, but it says that the, the devil, I think it's Peter, uh, the devil masquerades like an angel of light. Is he an angel of light? No. But he masquerades like that. So the devil can show himself powerful. He can say, look how powerful I am. But he's defeated. Right? He, he, he can show himself as great and mighty. Right? Why is it that there's so much sin in the world? Why are people turning away from God? Because he showed himself as mighty and people are believing and he's happy with it. But you and I as believers can say, Lord, I know the power of the enemy, the power of Satan is destroyed. He Colossians 1, he made a public spectacle, defeating the enemy once and for all. And here's the best part. There'll come a time in the, Revela in the book of Revelations, just before, after the thousand-year millennium, Satan is released once again. And what does Jesus do? He, he takes Satan and he puts him into eternal hell, eternal damnation. No more will he be able to torment people of God but right now we have to fight there'll come a time God will do his work right now we have to fight right so if there are there's a season that we may be going through a difficult season or a season where uh, challenges are there a season where we feel weak and tired we all go through them I remember you know after getting married uh I was 27 years old and I had a small baby. I was like, oh God, just a year back, I was, uh, you know, just, you know, you know, serving God and just being so free. Everything was, you know, wonderful. You know? And now I'm 27. I have a small child and I, I have no clue what to do with a child, firstly. Uh, just 27 years old and I was confused and, uh, you know, I became really tired and I didn't know what to do. 
it was a season. Right, I thank God for His grace upon our lives, and I'm sure all of us going are going through some kind of a season in our life. So, it's all right. It's all right. Remember, God takes us through those seasons, but He strengthens us. Right, yeah, the power. You know, sometimes what we planned may not really work out, but that does not mean that Jesus is not in control. Satan may come and say, hey, this is what you thought. See what I have done. I've changed the plan and I've made it difficult for you now. I'm and, and further on, I'm going to make it impossible for you. That's what the enemy will say. He's the accuser of the brethren. But what you and I should do is we must say, the power of Satan over my life is destroyed. And we have complete mastery, a complete dominion with Satan and his demons. We have to fight that fight. And that's a joy, right? It's joy. Uh, it, it's it's not something that we should uh, think, okay, God, can you just take me away? No. Let him take us through those seasons and know and trust God, you know, um, uh, and, and proclaim what Jesus did on the cross for us. And finally, we are redeemed, that is, we are purchased uh, as God's possessions. Right now, you and I are God's possessions. God will take care of us. The more, you know, I heard this saying, I read this in a book, uh, the safest place to be is to be in the will of God. Right? Uh, Sometimes we think this place is not safe or that place is not safe. This city or this country is not safe. Naturally, yes, it could be true. But the safest place to be for us as believers is to be in the will of God. Knowing that God has purchased us. We are God's children. We are his possession. Jesus says this wonderfully. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't store up in barns. But yet my heavenly father provides for them. How much more will he not provide and look after for his own children? He will. We are his position, possessions. One drop of the blood of Jesus destroys everything Satan can do. Satan can bring all kinds of arrows. He can tip those arrows with fire and he may shoot those arrows at us or one drop of the blood of Jesus can destroy every work of the devil. The cup we drink is a cup that brings blessings into our life. The bread that we eat is us sharing on the finished work of the cross which is made available for us. And it's so wonderful to see how Jesus orchestrated everything. Before he died, he said, you do this because when I die, the work will be finished and the work will, of destroying the enemy will be done. And after it is finished, after the cross is done, after I've destroyed the enemy, when you partake in this, what I'm showing you now, it will bring life and meaning. It will bring restoration, hope into your life. Each time we drink the bread and sorry, eat the bread and drink the cup, we can expect the Holy Spirit to administer the full blessings, the finished work of cross, of the cross of Christ. Dishonoring the Lord's table will be uh, of what is made sacred will only bring sickness and diseases upon our lives. Right? Uh, the Corinthian church were completely out of order. They dis disobeyed. The Lord's table by making it a feast. However, when things became right, we see later on that the church was restored. As believers, we do not have to fear for weakness, sickness, because when we partake in the Lord's table and we have been taught how to do it the right way, when we do it the right way, we do not have to fear about things that are happening in our lives. Now, I'm sure the question may come up, why is it that 
There are so many people who are sick, yet they're taking, they're partaking in the Lord's table week after week after week, yet that sickness is still there. Or why is it that there are so many who are uh, true good believers who are in hospitals going through, you know, so much of sickness or diseases? What happened? We must understand that every time we partake, we're defeating the enemy's work and we're partaking in faith. We know it's the Lord Jesus who will bring healing to us. Now, even if it, our first approach must be, God, heal me. If the healing has not happened, continue to trust and have faith in God. Right? But be assured of this, that we are part of his kingdom. We are part, we are his children, we are his possessions. Right? You know, somebody asked me this question, what about people who are good believers, who are terminal? They're terminal. They, they have cancer, or they're they, you know, going to lose their life. What about them? It's a hard, it's a very, very hard season. It's very hard to answer these questions, but we are assured of one thing. The Lord holds us in our hands. We are his possessions and he knows what is best for us. And we just completely trust in him, right? Uh, each time we celebrate the Lord's table, we bring joy to his heart and fear in the enemy's camp. The cup and bread, the cup of blessings, what we bless, we speak, we announce uh, during the time of communion. Um, and we say drink, we receive it in faith. When we say eat and drink of it, we receive it in faith. We receive the blessings of the cross in faith. And one more thing is that uh, we must stay away from idols and sacrifices. Now, I know that we all don't uh, you know, partake in any of idol worship or anything, but anything that takes the place of God becomes an idol. Paul is writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 19 to 24. He says, what am I saying then? That an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything. Rather that the things which Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Now, once again, the place in Corinth is a place where God is Aphrodite. And so what is happening is that the believers in Corinth are eating food sacrificed to idols and they're partaking in the Lord's table. Now they know that that is food sacrificed to idols. Paul recognizes this and he says, these are sacrifices made to demons. And how can we fellowship with what is sacrificed to demons and then fellowship in the Lord's table? We cannot mix true worship and idol worship. Uh, this is unacceptable in God's eyes and it must not happen. Right? This provokes the Lord's jealousy and, uh, uh, and uh, sorry, this provokes the Lord's jealous love and care for his people. And, and what happens is we are blocking the blessings of the cross to come into our life. Now, when in our life, when we look around, if we know that there is food sacrificed to idols uh, as that has been offered to us, avoid it. Right? Avoid it. Because Paul is saying here, how can we partake in both food sacrificed to uh, you know, idols and, food sac uh, and, and, and the Lord's table? We cannot mix both worship. So turn away from it. There are many instances where I have turned away and I've said, no, it's all right. Thank you. Gently, humbly in love. 
Now the wrong thing to do is to say, hey, what, you know, what you're doing is wrong. You know, you should, uh, this is all idle. The idle cannot speak. It'll, you know, what does it do? It's just sitting there. One. Those are wrong ways to speak, right? All you can say is gently, humbly, and love. Just reject it and say, no, no, thank you. Many times, because of that humble uh, rejection or just saying no, many of them have come and asked me, why is it that you don't? And it gave me an opportunity to share the gospel. Right Now, I didn't share the gospel saying, you know, on the Lord's table, this is what happened. Jesus said this because they're not going to understand. But of course, you just share the simple gospel and then eventually get them to understand uh, bigger things. We don't have to say, you know, this is all, you know, uh, uh, demonic and only what Jesus did is, uh, you know, true because he's the true God. And that would be the wrong way to deal with this. Uh, just, just humbly, kindly, uh, in a good manner, just uh, say th no thank you and move on. So the Apostle Paul has addressed four issues of eating things offered to idols here. First one, he says, spiritual aspects involved. They are worshipping of demons and here you're worshipping God. Uh, you cannot mix worship of God and the worship of demons. Three, it may be culturally acceptable, but it may not be helpful and edifying. Especially when you look at Corinth, culturally, it's okay. It's okay. You can, I'm sure the believers in the church also would have said, okay, he's, you know, just eating the food there uh, and he's part. It's all right. It's culturally okay. Right? But it was not edifying to the person and to the church. Four, I also need to consider the others, uh, well being of others in the church and as believers. Now, if I take it and the others in the church see it, they say, hey, he's partaking in that. Even I can do that. Nothing's wrong with him. It's all right. So they will also partake. And so what happens is uh, I become a testimony or an example for wrong things. Right. So I always need to consider the well-being of others as well. Every need is met through the blood covenant. Here, final, just the last one and we'll close. The ultimate purpose of the blood covenant is relationship. And here the Lord Jesus, in his blood covenant, he has made a relationship with us. Uh, uh, when Jesus says, uh, I am the bread of life, Jesus interjects his teaching with a passage uh, informing the crowd that you have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. What was he trying to communicate? Remember, he was telling his disciples and the people, uh, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, I'm sure the first thought they would have gone through is, this is not right. This is cannibalism. We can't eat your body and drink your blood. It's offensive. Not only that, in the old covenant, God has told us that we are not to touch the blood. It's 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 offensive to God. You know, some of the offerings God says, drip out all the drain out all the blood. And some of the uh, in the old covenant, God said, don't eat these animals, uh, the hooved animals, and eat this, eat don't eat this. And now you're saying, eat my body and drink my blood. It was offensive to the people who were hearing it. But what was Jesus trying to communicate? He was using blood as a covenant language uh, because we see him using the same language in the new covenant as well. Later on at the Lord's table, he says that, eat and drink. He says, eat, this is my body, drink, this is my blood. He was building an, uh, a relationship. It was a symbolic covenant, a blood covenant that God, the Lord Jesus, was establishing with his people. Jesus is, then points out that it is through the work of the Holy Spirit and through the word that the blood covenant will be established over and over again. And so it's so wonderful to learn this. Uh, we'll stop here. Uh, we have a little more, uh, but what we'll do is next week shall be our, should be our last class. And then uh, uh, after that, I'll just post the assignment uh, probably sometime uh, after next Wednesday. 
uh, and that will be your final assignment. So next Wednesday should be your last class, right? Okay. Before, yes, Zelatoli. Yes, go ahead. Do you have a question? Um, yeah, Pastor. Uh, sorry, like uh, uh, I want to ask uh, regarding the midterm assignment. Like uh, there were some issues uh, with my network. The network was like joining, and I submitted my assignment on time. But when I check after Pastor uh, Dina informed me, my assignment was not yet submitted for uh, the New Testament uh, assignment and uh, your assignment also. So I submitted late. So that's what I want to inform. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll just check uh, because see, uh, everything is now. Um... You know, uh, it's all admin related. So there are some changes that we cannot make. Uh, so with regards to that, I'll have to check with the admin team. Um, I'll probably email you and get back to you on that. Is that okay? Yes, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, success. Yes, your voice is very low, success. Good morning, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Uh, I've not been. I've not been around. I went on a mission field to the village, and so I've not done any of my assignment. I just came back there yesterday, and uh, I have to go back to. So, please, is it possible for me to still do my assignments because I just came back yesterday, sir? Yeah, success. So the thing is, uh, everything is uh, done by the admin team. Now we have an oh. IT uh, IT team, so they will have to. Uh, you know, I, we are not allowed to make any changes to the due dates, uh, but we'll have to check with the administrator, and uh, we we'll probably email you on what we can what can be done. So, uh, right. Right. any All any right. any any questions about the topic of study today, uh, other than. Mm -hmm. Yes, I no, I, I perfectly enjoyed it and uh, I'm okay with it. All right. Very much All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. God bless. Thank you. Um, I'll, be expecting, I'll be expecting the email. Sure, sure, success. All right. All right. Shall you. we just close in prayer, please? Um, yes, any one of us can please close. Uh, Bega, Anita, anyone, uh, please close in prayer. All right, let's pray. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the lecture we have had this morning. We thank you for the strength you give to our lecturers. We thank you for every student that have participated in this program. Father, be that glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are going in your hands, O Lord. We commit all our activities today into your hands. Please secure us and refresh our lecturer in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because you are a wonderful God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, success. All right. Thank you, everyone, thank you, for joining. Have a wonderful week. I'll we'll catch up next week. All right. God bless.